Now you all remember when we used to say, liar, liar, pants on fire. Well, on today's case, Ms. Rice says her life partner, Ms. Douglas, lies so much that it's not just her pants that are burning. She says Ms. Douglas has lied about everything, from having sex with their male friend to having a job. Now Ms. Rice says she's had enough of Ms. Douglas's twisted tales, and she's ready to leave her if she does not fess up and change her ways. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Rice versus Douglas. Thank you very much, Ms. Rice and Ms. Douglas. Ms. Rice, you say you can no longer deal with Ms. Douglas's toxic behavior and you wish to end your union. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Douglas, you admit to your past indiscretions, but say Ms. Rice needs to get her priorities straight. You would like to save this relationship. Yes, Your Honor. So, ladies, I am happy to see that you all have been in a relationship together for 11 years. You had a spiritual marriage ceremony two years ago, but something has got you at a crossroads in your relationship. Ms. Rice, why are we in court today, ma'am? Well, Your Honor, I'm here today to end my relationship with Ms. Douglas. Um, I am spent all of my 20s working on a relationship with her, and it just seems that we're getting nowhere. Uh, Ms. Douglas is dishonest, she's controlling, she's unfaithful, and she's also lazy. And I'm just at the point now where I'm just over it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. So I'm here to end that today. Ms. Harris Douglas, you are here saying you want to save the relationship, but you heard what Ms. Rice says. What do you say? Yes, Your Honor. I am here to save our relationship. Um, I believe that 11 plus years is a lot of dedication and commitment, and I know that I've made mistakes, but I am ready to change and do whatever it takes to salvage our marriage and continue growing. So it sounds like you came into the courtroom trying to be solution oriented, trying to figure out a way to make Absolutely. this work. Absolutely. Okay, well, we'll see if it even exists, because, Ms. Rice, I understand when somebody says that they're fed up, you tell me how you all started out and what happened to get us to this point that you're in divorce court. Yes, Your Honor, we met in high school. Um, we actually met in a bathroom of high school. I, uh, a mutual friend introduced us to each other, but I was actually in a relationship at the time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really interested in Ms. Douglas, but um, she ended up finding me on social media platforms, following me, messaging me. Uh, from that point, it became obsessive, just uh, calling me all of the time, a lot of text messages, wanting to, like, meet up all of the time, and I did continue to express to her that I was in a connection. So, the obsessiveness just continued on to hmm. the point where I just ended up giving in and being involved with her. So, she kind of grew on me over time, but I was in a connection for, like, five of those years of the 11 that we've been together. So, in the first five years, you all were not in a fully committed monogamous relationship, correct, Ms. Harris-Douglas? Yes, Your Honor. We were just having fun, um, kind of like a back and forth thing. Mm -hmm. She had her own thing going on. She really wasn't um, seriously committed to that relationship. So I thought that I could squeeze my way in, and I was um, contingent on doing that. And yeah. I put forth the effort to make that happen. And obviously, it worked. So at some point, about five, six years ago, you started making this a relationship that you were going to work on. Miss Price. Two years ago, you decided to get spiritually married. So, something must have gone right in the beginning, but now you're at a point where you say you don't trust her. What is that about? Yes, Your Honor, I do not trust Ms. Douglas. Um, we did have a situation where we decided to roommate with one of her friends and his girlfriend. So, so four people in one apartment? Yes, we had a two-bedroom, two-bathroom. Okay. Um, so, we decided to room with them. I was okay with it. Um, I did come home one day and I seen a condom in her trash can, so I did address her about it. And Wait after... a minute. Unless I miss my guess, y'all don't need a condom. Right. Okay. Well, I don't discriminate. I like men, women. I don't... I don't really judge people. I'm pretty sure you... The, the woman that you're supposed to be spiritually married to doesn't care that you like men or women unless they are involved at the time you're supposed to be involved with her. Right. Well, we were on an off point within that time frame when me and my roommate slept together. Uh, she and I were at odds and... Were you all in the same house still? Yeah, but I know we seen each other and going, and at that time, she wasn't there, and he and I made an agreement to keep it on a down low, and he obviously couldn't keep a secret. Well, actually, the evidence didn't keep the secret, <laughs> because 
Ms. Rice came home and found a condom. Am I correct, Ms. Rice? Yes, Your Honor. I did come home and find the condom, and when I addressed Ms. Douglas about it, she stated that she didn't know where it came from. And so I... she lied initially. She did. So I did um, address her about it. She told me she didn't know anything about it, and at that time we were still sexually involved with each other. We were still sleeping together. But wait a we minute. I'm sorry. Your passing. partner just told me that y'all were on a break. No, we were not just seeing each other in passing. We are, we're not on a break. In my eyes, break... For me, a break is we're not on the best terms. So we had had a, a recent falling out. So to me, we were on a break. And me and my, my roommate, we made a decision. It was supposed to be a secret. And I know it was say, supposed to be a secret. I can agree. Unfaithfulness is never supposed to be on blast. I get that. But what I'm trying to figure out is what... How do you say it constitutes a break when you are still intimately involved with each other still living in the same house, still sleeping in the same bed, that's not a break. That's called an afternoon delight, unless I miss <laughs> my guest. Yeah. Miss Rice, am I wrong? No, I agree completely. So how'd you actually find out the real deal? Well, I ended up finding out because about two weeks later, after I found the condom, her and the roommate actually get, ended up getting into a altercation. Like, they were verbally going back and forth, so he did come to me and express to me what happened between him and Miss Douglas. Side dudes time. ain't loyal. Mm -hmm. So it ended up getting back to me regardless, but when I initially addressed her about it, she acted as if she didn't know what was going on. So that's the part that really drove me over the edge because I gave you the opportunity to be honest with me and you chose to not do that and you're talking about we were on a break but we were clearly not on a break. So, Miss Douglas, I can understand why Miss Rice has some trust issues now. Do you at least understand what she's talking about? Yeah, I understand her trust issues but I have mine as well. I know, but you started to have an affair with somebody living in your home while you were still sleeping in the same bed and in a relationship with this woman. And when confronted about it, instead of saying, well, we're on a break, or I'm not feeling connected right now and we need to deal with this, you lied. And then you picked somebody to lie with, and I'm talking in the biblical sense, who couldn't even keep a secret. So you made poor choices the whole way. When we decided to have the spiritual ceremony, all of her friends were there, but none of my friends were present, and I didn't even get a real ring. Wow, ungrateful. Why do you think that was not appropriate? She knows what I like. But I also have to love in the way that I know how and the way that I want to project it. But you can't put her in the middle of your movie, because that's what you did. Ms. Rice, to what do you attribute that? If Let's just be honest. Why, why wouldn't y'all just say we can just kick it, but we're not in a situation that we want to be in a committed relationship? Well, initially, that was the plan uh, for us to be monogamous. I did express to her that I would be open to having an open relationship if it's gonna come to that. Um, and once I expressed that, that is when she decided that she wanted to be married, so when she wanted to be actual life partners. So that's when we actually had the ceremony where um, we... You're both committed. Yes, where we decided to commit instead of being open. So when we decided to have the spiritual ceremony, all of her friends were there, but none of my friends were present. And I was not really dressed for the occasion. My hair wasn't done. My nails wasn't done. And she knows what type of woman I am and how I like to carry myself. And uh -oh. then the ring that she gave me was actually like a crystal wrapped in some copper. It wasn't like an actual diamond ring. So I had a really big issue with that. And next thing I know, there's cameras all around. Everybody has their cameras out recording everything going on. And I'm just confused. Like, I did was not expecting that, which proposals are supposed to be exciting, but I feel like she knows me enough to know that that was not to my liking. So, but I didn't want to embarrass her. In front I of was all just of her trying friends. to be sweet. I'm a very creative individual. Everything that I do is spontaneous, and I don't believe that marriage and engagement has to be like it is on TV. It's one thing for you to surprise her with a proposal. It's another thing for you to surprise her with what is purported to be a marriage ceremony. I can't control when you're gonna ask me to be your life partner or your wife, but I certainly would like some input in how that's gonna manifest itself afterwards. I don't think that's unreasonable. I didn't even get a real ring. Wow, ungrateful. You gave me a ball wrapped in some aluminum foil. Why do wow. you... Why do you think that was not appropriate? It was not appropriate because 
she knows what I like. You know what type of woman I am. You didn't even make sure that I was dressed for the occasion. You didn't make sure I had my nails done, feet done, anything, especially if I'm going to be on camera. Mm -hmm. So she didn't make sure of any of that. And I just felt like, yeah, you put forth an effort, but you didn't put forth enough effort. You don't put forth you weren't, enough effort. She wasn't anything. speaking your language. She was not. See, love languages, you know, can be confusing. Somebody speaking Spanish when the other person speaking French. You were speaking beautiful French, the language of love in your own way, but she doesn't understand French. What she actually speaks is Portuguese. Right, because I feel like, what does that really matter? Love conquers it, all. No, it doesn't. No. Love is finding a mutual place of respect and honesty with each other and then conquering all together. But you got to get to that mutual place of respect. But I also have to love in the way that I know how and the way that I want to project it. I understand that, but you can't put her in the middle of your movie because that's what you did. You invited your friends to a place that you wanted to be at a time and a date under circumstances that you wanted to control. She was supposed to pay the rent for us on last month, and she decided that she was going to take the money that she had and go party. I'll admit that I did spend the rent money, but I'm also a big believer of faith. It's not supposed to just be me asking the Lord for favor. It's supposed to be me showing the Lord that I'm doing something with the favor he's already given me. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how, in fact, this became so toxic. There's some major red flags going on in your relationship, Ms. Rice, right? Yes, Your Honor. What would you say are the red flags? I would say the biggest red flag is the fact that the sex is boring. Uh -oh. um, Ms. Douglas is lazy. She's always complaining of her bones are hurting, her knees are hurting, her feet are hurting. There's always just some type of issue or problem when it comes down to the bedroom. Um, so she says that I just have a super hot sex drive, but no, it's you're not... addicted to sex. No, I am not addicted you're to addicted sex. You're addicted to that porn. Has... No, I am not. I am not addicted to sex, but I would like to share romantic intimacy and sexual pleasure with my partner. Three times a day? On a, a consistent day? basis. Three it doesn't have to be day, three times Honor. a day, but three times a week, I feel like you could at least do that. You can't even do that. If you want it three times a day, I mean, my bones do begin to hurt. I do get tired Your of waking up to you hurting. watching porn. You wake up hurt. You're watching porn several times a day. I'm not going to be able to catch up to that. That's just something that we're going to have to find a middle ground. Three times a day, too much watching porn. I mean, is it me that you want or the people on the camera? Do you want me to watch porn or do you want me to When's cheat? When's the last time you all had an intimate encounter? It's been about five months. Okay, so that right there is telling me that y'all have no connection whatsoever. If uh, two adult people are living in the same house, turning their back on each other and not feeling any intimate connection, something else is going on. Well, I believe that in healthy relationships, mm -hmm. taking a few months from not being sexually active is totally fine, especially when there is an unhealthy balance going on within the sex life. But how do you find time to have sex with other people, but you're not able to do it with me? Woo! Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. You missed your cue, Robert. Yeah. What were you supposed to say on that one? Bomba. Bomba! Slept with a roommate, had an affair for two plus years, but. She gave me attention that you weren't giving me. It's You're always out partying, partying. I'm not able to get your attention in the way that I need it. So, of course, I'm going to be involved with people who relate to me. She was a creative. I mean... Well, I'm partying because much. you're born. Okay, wow. you all don't seem like you like each other anymore. Miss Rice, this is what you were talking about when you first made your claim when you walked in here, that, you, quote, you're over it. Because I'm not hearing any kind of loving... Relationship. Yeah, it's just I'm over it at this point. Like she can't keep a job. What do you mean she can't keep a job? I'm, I'm, I don't understand. So she believes that, which I totally respect a person being an entrepreneur. That's great. But poetry is not going to pay the bills. She was supposed to pay the rent for us on last month, and she decided that she was going to take the money that she had and go party with her friends and do what she wanted to do. She told me that she paid the rent, but the rent wasn't paid. Ma'am, I am a creative. I am an entrepreneur. I'll admit that I did spend the rent money, but I'm also a big believer of faith. So I thought that we'd be able to get it paid back on time. 
I don't have to be out 9 to 5 working. No, I... you don't have to be out 9 to 5, but trust and believe on the 1st and the 15th, <laughs> somebody's sending a bill to the crib. Right. And, you and it's got to be paid. It does not matter. I was working. I you was working, working on my because poetry. I sat outside in the neighborhood and watched you stay at home all day. You were not working. Yes, I was working on my poetry. And ultimately, my poetry will pay our bills. Okay. So what is supposed to happen while Miss Rice, your partner, pays the rent? I mean, if it's your turn, what were you prepared to do? I pray. I, I As do I. I the, the most high, and the rent will be paid, and it always has been. You know what? I truly believe that people find their spirituality in their heart, and I have the faith of mountains. But God demands that I put some effort in. It's not supposed to just be me asking the Lord for favor. It's supposed to be me showing the Lord that I'm doing something with the favor he's already given me. Thank you. And, I mean, how would you feel if in the next few years my poetry, I just blow up? And we well, never have be, to pay rent again. You'll feel you. so, you'll feel so terrible for, for shaming me for being a full-time creator. I won't creator. feel terrible. That'll be great for you, but that has nothing to do with the here and the now. See, that's her problem. She's always living in the future. We're talking about right here, right now. The bills have to be paid right here, right now, today. That has nothing to do with the future. What happens if she doesn't work, if she stops paying the bills? What happens... We'll be homeless. And she, then she'll be saying, oh, well, we can just pray to the Lord and stay in the car. We'll be all right. Prayer for payment. Yeah. Ms. Rice, you came to court today because you suspect that your life partner has lied about pretty much everything pretty as much. it relates to your relationship, and you said you were at the end of your rope. Ms. Douglas, you said you wanted to try to save this relationship, but it sounds like Ms. Rice has literally checked out of the relationship because you have put yourself in a situation where your needs have either changed or you're just not willing to meet the needs of your partner. Ms. Rice, I'm going to say you are not remotely on the same page, much less in the same chapter or even reading the same book. Y'all are completely different. This is unhealthy because you're treating each other poorly, and something tells me your time is up. There's a season of change that has come in this relationship, and this so-called marriage lacks all the things that a marriage has. Trust, fidelity, kindness. You lack all of that. With all due respect, Your Honor, you have no idea what we've been through. You no, have I no don't. idea the Zero. of what we've been through. None. And but why is there such anger in front of me, then? Why is there such anger? Why is Ms. Rice so disgusted right now? I'm looking at her face. She can barely look at you. I don't have all the facts. In 30 minutes, I'll never have them. But you have all the facts. That's the difference. So you know why her face looks like that. You know why she's mad. And I haven't heard you say anything to this lady to make her not feel that way. So if you want to save this relationship, tag your it. What you got? I love you. And I want to be with you. I want to change. I want to be a better person. I want to take responsibility, paying our bills. Outside of my poetry career, I'll get a job. I'm open to doing whatever it is I need to do to make this relationship work. And I just need you to believe in us and remember everything that we've been through and also what we're building going forward. I believed in that for the past decade, and I think I'm just over it now. You could sit here and say that today, and it'll be six months from now, and you'll be saying that same thing again. So I think I'm good. But I appreciate it. And I do love you as well, and I hope that you can heal from that and grow from that, but I'm just like, I have to choose me. She chose her. Robert, this relationship is doomed. Doomed from the very beginning. They really were not in sync. Not in sync, and she's like trying to have this like free will life, and and you know it's gonna get paid. Listen, I'm a faithful guy, mm -hmm. but if I wrote a poem, put it on an envelope, and send it to my landlord, I'm still getting evicted. 
Well... Made in Georgia.